Okay, we're back. This is Dave Vellante, and we're live here at EMC World 2012. We're in Las Vegas, and this is SiliconANGLE's The Cube, where we bring you the smartest nodes on the planet. We extract information, we share it with you and package it and share it with you, our audience. We've been broadcasting live all week, Monday. We're here all day Tuesday. We'll be broadcasting tomorrow. We've got a simulcast going on at the HBase conference. My co-host John Furrier is at the HBase conference uh, interviewing all the leading executives there. You had Mike Olson on earlier today and all, uh, Amar Awadal is there and all the HBase uh, community. And uh, he'll be back here tomorrow. So right now we're talking channels. Uh, Fred Kahoot and Jeff Taylor are executives within EMC's channel business. Now, for those of you who have followed uh, me personally and theCUBE, we've talked about the transformation of EMC within the channel. This has come from the top. Uh, really, Joe Tucci, the CEO and chairman of EMC, has made a commitment to the channel. It has trickled down. Uh, the business is changing. You can't go it alone with a pure direct sales force. And gentlemen, Let's talk about that. Um, first of all, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, great to be here. Thanks, great to be here. And um, so you heard my you know, little rap at the beginning. You know, EMC used to be known as the, you know, the meat-eating, direct sales force, that channel, you know, we don't need no channel. And, uh, and that's changed a lot over the last you know, three to five years, hasn't it? It's changed quite significantly. I think part of the message that we're talking about here is transformation. And that's what the nature of the conference is about. And clearly the market is changing, going to a more cloud-based solution and a solution orientation. And we are changing our go-to-market to match that and to drive the growth. We realize that our partners deliver solutions and offer a whole host of complementary capabilities to our own sales team. And we realize that to, for us to achieve our financial goals, the partners are as, as, uh, as significant as anything else. To, to us and critical to our success. Yeah, so I understand you guys ha, uh, have a, uh, a, a partner conference, right? Your first ever summit, partner summit. That's right. right. Um, what's that all about? Take us well, through that. Well, we decided really to align with the transformation underway. This is our first ever global partner summit. So we have over 3,000 partners here from more than 80 countries. We had their, their own keynote session on Sunday with all EMC executives and now we're breaking out the rest of the days where they get theater specific information, they hear from all the product groups, all the operational and enablement groups, and the interest and the response has been just outstanding. So I think it's reflective of how that partner ecosystem is getting bigger, right? And becoming a, a larger part of EMC strategy. Yeah, so, so Jeff, EMC, as, as I was saying, it's transformed itself, it's become more channel friendly, there's sort of a vacuum now. If you look at the big companies, a lot of guys are going vertically integrated, a lot of guys are making big acquisitions that are somewhat threatening to the channel. Um, and EMC is sort of filling that, that void. Um, talk a little bit about culturally the shift that went on inside of EMC to become more you know, channel friendly. Everybody talks about being channel friendly, but how are you guys putting your money where your mouth is? Sure, I think and what we've been describing here at, and with our partners across a variety of different medias is the, um, is the priorities we have and the substance of the meat underneath that. So first and foremost, this has been a sales-led initiative, whereas in the past we've talked about moving into the channel uh, and had support from the company. Now we have the commitment from the CEO on down from the sales leadership. So the commitment is one really critical part of it. Second, to align our sales, sales engine, we've done a number of things, including enhancing and enforcing our rules of engagement. So it's clear that every sales organization is commission driven. So we've, we've decided and stated that if a sales rep breaks a rule of engagement with our partner, their commission will be directly impacted. So the way you change sales rep behavior and affect the culture is you change the compensation structure and that's what we've done with our sales force and that's going to have significant impact. Yeah, so that's a, that's a two-edged sword, right? Because you got to get it right. If you don't get it right, your, your margins go down, right? So it's been a learning experience, hasn't it? It is a learning experience. I think we're being, you know, we're taking significant but also incremental steps, right? So we haven't said, hey, we're going to open all the markets and really release release ourselves completely into the channel. We said, look, we're going to open hundreds of accounts in the enterprise and millions of dollars of run rate business in each of our three theaters as a way to start engaging our partner community and start start building the momentum and the trust and the predictability with the level of accounts there. And then we'll increase and increasingly open more and do more with those partners. Fred, we were talking off camera about the V-Specs announcement. We right. were there covering it with theCUBE. And um, interesting strategy, different from V-Block. I always say any colors you want as long as it's black. Yeah. Open it up to the channel. Actually put partners' names 
on the product. That's right. You know, different philosophy than say, you know, some other companies that, you know, here's our brand. Right. Boom, three letters. Right. <laughs> Talk about the V specs, the channel reaction, the partner reaction to, to V specs, and give us an update on where you're at with that. Well, I think the proof is in the numbers, and in the six weeks since we've uh, announced that new solution and solution concept to the marketplace, we've had over 140 partners sign up to get enabled and take it to market. And that's just in six weeks. So I think that's reflective of the level of interest, and then, of course, we've all been having meetings with partners, and invariably the conversation comes back to or around VSpecs, and they're very interested in the opportunity it represents for them to leverage more of their line card, right? To get to market with a differentiated or higher value solution. So we feel like from where we started in, in conceiving this and what it should be, we're getting an incredible amount of positive feedback that we're on mark. So I've been talking for a while on theCUBE about, um, as, as my partner John Furrier, about um, the land grab that's going on in the channel. That's what I call it, right? I mean, and you get large companies that see the value of the channel, they understand the leverage they can get out of the channel, and so they're throwing money at them, they're doing channel only deals, uh, they're really catering to the channel. You guys are as well. What's your differentiation? I mean, so you've, you're, you're, you're competing for channel mind share. Uh, in many cases, you're up against you know, more well-funded companies, I mean you guys are well funded, no question, but bigger companies, right. you know, hundreds of billions of dollars of revenue. How do you guys differentiate and how do you compete for that channel mind share? Yeah, sure, Fred, maybe I'll start and sure. follow up. I think, I think there's a couple of ways that we, we fight and compete for market share. One of those is uh, on the solutions, VSpecs for example. So as we've talked to our partners, what do partners want? They want the ability to differentiate uh, their offerings and deliver services. So I think the VSpec solutions offers what their customers want, which is choice and flexibility, and we bring the creativity of EMC and the management capabilities in to develop products and solutions like VSpecs. So I think VSpecs is one way we differentiate ourselves. The second thing that we're doing is uh, really being very, really comprehensive in how we're, we're approaching the partners. So we talked about the rules of engagement. We're doing uh, pretty comprehensive rep training. You kind of go down the line and a list of all the things you need to make make this channel successful, we're doing all of those with the full support of EMC. So I feel like that comprehensive approach combined with differentiated offerings is what's going what's to set us apart. So what's the channel telling you that they want? I mean, obviously they want margin, right? At the end of the day, it's all about margin, but sure. you know, uh, that's, those, that's a knob you can turn, and you, know, you, can, you can only turn it so hard. You know, what else are they telling you that they want, and, and how are you delivering that? You know, I think they're always looking for more support and how they get to market, right? not only from a skills standpoint, but from an ability to market and create demand. I think they're always looking for more play on the, the services side of the equation, and so we had a, an announcement around that this week as well, where uh, we're go going to enable our partners to drive more of that services engagement and reap the benefits from that. It's called cooperative services. So they want more of that play, and I think they want us, fundamentally, to keep bringing more IP into the market. That is one of our huge differentiators as well, right? That we have a portfolio that allows them to address several large markets that are fast growing. And in the end, that's what they want. Yeah, so they see the waves. Joe Tucci talked about the waves. They see these waves, and they're like, oh, I want to go after that wave. Right. You guys are the technology partner. You're coming in saying, hey, we got best of breed technology. We can help you attack that wave now. Is that is that really the the strategy, I mean, we've got the pieces of the portfolio, they're, they're, they're there for you, let's go. Absolutely, you know, if, if you just look at what we did with these new practices around private cloud infrastructure or public cloud as a service, and how you deliver that, that's all expressing the fact that we're going to get our partners lined up with the rest of our EMC IP. And once everybody's in a straight line, then they get to harvest all of that investive, all of that IP investment collectively. Exactly, that's right. How about, let's talk about cloud a little bit. You know, I talked about two-edged sword before. Cloud is kind of a two-edged sword, right? I mean, if I'm buying everything from a service provider, um, what does that mean for the channel? So how is the channel responding to the whole cloud movement? I mean, it's private cloud, I get. Right, that's cool. But you know, as people go into public, more public cloud, you know, Joe said, hey, it's not either or, we're going to have both. 
Right. As people move more toward the private cloud, they're going to be, the, the service provider becomes the channel. How are the channel partners responding to that? Sure, if I can start. I, I think there's a couple different models that will emerge, right? So, the largest channel partners are enthusiastically embracing it and they're going to build out infrastructure and we'll support them, you know, support them to do that. The smaller, uh, smaller partners will look as almost, uh, will look to the larger partners and the much larger SPs and they'll look to broker services from them because they won't have the financial substance to go invest the hundreds of millions of dollars to build out network operating centers, et cetera. So I think there's still very much a role for all the players in the channel from the smallest tier twos up through distribution into the bigger tier ones and, and beyond to play a role as the channel model evolves and participate in that. And I think uh, each player in that ecosystem is figuring out their role and how they want to play, but clearly, uh, the channel partners are excited and excited about driving into that. You that know, model. there's this notion that one replaces the other, and I think you, you need to kind of flip that on its head and look at what's happening with public cloud or as a service offerings are really expanding the market because it's uncovering a bunch of latent or, or suppressed buying behavior from companies that couldn't afford IT. And so I think the right way to, to get this in our minds is it's additive not subtract. And so that allows us to have multiple partner types to fulfill all of those purchasing models. Well, I mean, it, it, I, and I agree with that. It's additive if the, if the channel partner responds to the trend. If they keep doing what they've been doing as the market moves, right. then it's not going to be additive. So that's the, that seems to be the trick that the channel guys got to navigate, right? Because if they just think they can just keep doing what they're doing, uh, selling boxes, that's probably not going to get them to where they want to go. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think there's two options, right? Either they adopt the model mm. or they shrink, right? That's the, yeah. the, the, the future is very clear and you know, that's why we're actively announcing the cloud builder practice and other cloud uh, capabilities to help push them in that direction, but it seems very clear there's two options. Adopt you know, what, or, what's or interesting shrink. is that it opens up a new partnership opportunity for them because they can work, if you characterize that that partner who's doing transactions only, well they have an opportunity to actually be a broker for larger service providers, right? So again, I think there are possibilities there that we need to, to enable them to play out, you know, broker that relationship or enable that relationship to occur. Excellent. All right, gentlemen, uh, Fred and Jeff, thanks very much for coming on uh, theCUBE and giving you us bet. your perspective hey, on the, you. You the channel. C congratulations on that transformation. I think you guys are doing a great job in the channel and uh, very strategic and key piece of the uh, EMC portfolio, so keep it right here. We'll be right back. We got uh, an interview with uh, Laura Mattingly, who's the uh, uh, head of uh, client support services at uh, Louisville Gas and Electric. Uh, so keep it right there, siliconangle.tv, be right back. <laughs>